In this video, we're going to introduce a generalization of the Helmholtz equation. Now, we've looked at the Helmholtz equation before, but uh, we did that in the context of epsilons, which were constants, or at least piecewise constants. Now we're going to generalize that to refractive index profiles that can vary in a continuous function as uh, the position varies. And what we're also going to do is rather than looking at a scalar field psi, moving to a vectorial uh, quantity. Okay. Starting point is obviously Maxwell's equations. So Maxwell's equation is that the curl of the electric field, which can vary as a function of the position. So I'm going to omit these uh, vectorial signs here just to make my life a little bit easier. So the curl of the electric field is equal to minus j omega mu the magnetic field. And what we're going to do here is say that mu is a boring constant. So we're not going to look at special magnetic uh, materials here. And then the second equation is that the curl of the magnetic field is j omega epsilon. But here we need to be careful. Epsilon is not a constant. Epsilon can vary as a function of the position times the electric vectorial field as a function of the position. So these will be the two variables that we need to look at. So what I suggest you do now is pause the video and try to eliminate the electric fields from these, uh, these equations. So what can, we can do is obviously uh, bring this thing to the left hand side. So if we divide everything by j omega epsilon, then we can isolate uh, the electric fields. And if we plug that in the first equation, then we have a single equation which only involves the magnetic field. So let's do that. So we have the curl of the electric field, which is going to be one over j omega epsilon as a function of r. Um, and then we have curl h of r. And then this is equal to minus j omega mu magnetic field. Okay. Now we need to be very careful here. We should not bring this epsilon here outside of this curl operator simply because epsilon here is no longer a constant. It can vary as a function of the position. So the partial derivatives here will play a role. So this epsilon cannot move outside of the differential operator. What we can move is the j omega because yeah, that's just a boring constant. So we can bring that to the right hand side, giving us then that the curl one over epsilon curl of h is equal to so j times j is minus one another minus one there we have omega squared mu h okay so this is the equation that we've uh, we've derived and again as i mentioned before mu is a, is a constant here now what we can do to clean this up a little bit is we can define another linear operator capital theta in this case which is defined as follows so curl 1 over epsilon curl. So what this operator does is, if, if it operates on a vector function, is first of all taking the curl of that uh, vector function, then dividing the result by epsilon, which again can be a function of the position, and then of the resulting vector function, take the curl again. So this is what this operator does in, uh, in words. Now, pause the video, redefine that equation here using this definition of this operator and see if you can identify what type of an equation we have in this case. So using the definition of this theta operator, we can write down that we have theta operating on our magnetic field H gives us omega squared mu times the same field, the same H. So this tells us that in essence what we have is an eigenvalue problem because we have an operator operating on a certain quantity giving us back that same quantity times a certain constant. So this uh, thing over here is an eigenfunction. So if you're working with, with matrices, this would be an eigenvector, but here we're talking about uh, function. So this is a so-called eigenfunction. Uh, and then omega squared mu is, of course, the eigenvalue, the eigenvalue of the operator uh, theta here, which describes Maxwell, which describes the, uh, the Helmholtz equation.
Now, in this particular chapter, we're going to take the viewpoint that this eigenvalue here is an unknown that we want to figure out. So we basically know the distribution of epsilon. So we know uh, the, um, the form that this operator takes. And then the question we ask ourselves is what type of solutions to Maxwell's equations, what type of eigenfunctions of this operator do we have, and which eigenvalues do they have, uh, or to put it another way, at which frequencies omega do they resonate. So this is the viewpoint that we're going to take in this chapter, considering Maxwell's equation as an eigenvalue problem, and we want to figure out its uh, eigenfunctions and its eigenvalues. Now, for physical reasons, it would be really great if omega squared mu of the eigenvalue were uh, real, but not only real, but also positive. Because if we're working with boring non-magnetic materials, mu is then also real and positive. So this would mean that omega squared is real and positive, And this would lead to the very nice property that the resonance frequency omega would be real. Uh, which would be nice for physical reasons, right? Because that's basically what, uh, what we want. So the physical intuition tells us that this thing should be true. The question is, can we also prove that from a purely mathematical point of view, uh, that this particular operator has the, the property that the eigenvalues are real and positive. But that will be uh, our work for the next videos.